Welcome back. Now, some of the world's most famous explorers have gathered in Portugal to celebrate 500 years since the first circumnavigation of the Earth and the upcoming 50th anniversary of the first moon landing. Other galaxies, another space. By the next innovation, we walk for science evolution, for protect species, diving into the deepest ecosystem. This is our future. Black Summit. What's next? Explore what you've never seen. Four to seven July. Azores, Portugal. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is uh, yes. Let's let's give an applause to that. That's beautiful. My name is Richard Weiss. I'm a former president of the Explorers Club. I'd like to welcome you to the last night of Oceans Week. And before I forget, there's so many people involved in this event. Uh, I'd just like to acknowledge them at this point. So if you were part of that um, Oceans Week committee, please raise your hand. I see a few of them over there. Great job, everyone, on there. So here's my next question. Who here has been to Portugal? Wow, a lot of hands going up. Let me take it another step forward. Who's been to the Azores? Wow, I, again, you know, I'm always impressed whenever you come to the Explorers Cup, you can ask these kind of questions. Well, obviously, you saw some unbelievably beautiful pictures, and um, we're here to announce the third um, Global Summit and Exploration Summit, and it's going to be held this year entirely in the Azores. So this is really your invitation to come to that. Now, the theme is what's next. And uh, similar to this Ocean Suite conference, it's going to be a very solution-oriented event. And of course, uh, you know, we'll mix it with a little sightseeing in there because between the volcanoes and the unbelievable marine life, and uh, if you're a fan of uh, hydrangeas, there's just acres and miles and miles or kilometers of hydrangeas all over the place. It, it's really a, a special place. And so the theme is, what's next? And um, uh, Kevin, if you push to the next slide there, you know, we, we've broken it up into themes. And um, with all of these, it, it's really bringing world-class explorers together. And we always feel like when you bring um, together great minds, even if they're not in the same uh, field, that it really germinates great ideas. And, you know, the Explorers Club is a global organization. Uh, it's going to be a three-day conference uh, between ocean, earth, space, and the EC50. Now, for some of you, the EC50 is a new concept. The, the motto of the EC50 is 50 people are changing the world that the world needs to know about. And um, these explorers uh, have been nominated by Explorer Club members. And one of the uh, sort of um, caveats are you couldn't be too famous. It was meant really to announce the next group of, uh, of explorers. Like we're so used to uh, celebrating Sylvia Earle or Kathy Sullivan or Don Walsh and so, so forth. But this is really a, a next generation of, of incredible explorers. Um, I'd also like to welcome, we have from the Portuguese uh, General uh, Council, and the UN Mission Ambassador. Do we have them here somewhere? Ah, right, right, right there. 
uh, and some other friends from Portugal. We'd also like to uh, announce that Rolex has generously agreed to be the sponsor of the EC50 and also part of GLEX, along with the space agency Axiom. And uh, at this point, I would like Selena Tavares from uh, uh, Tourism Portugal to come up, and she has a, a couple words and, and an invitation to come there. So it's her special invitation. Thank you, Selena. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you uh, to the Explorers Club. Thank you so much, Richard, uh, for hosting us today. Uh, we're so delighted to be here with all of you once again after two crazy years. I think we're fi finally back on track. Uh, I mean, as we can see, Glex Summit is uh, coming back to Portugal and fast approaching. We cannot wait to welcome you all back um, and have you not only discussing the future, but also experience, experiencing our beautiful destination and also our beautiful gastronomy and wines. Um, we'd also like to thank the Explorers Club for this continued partnership and to reinforce Visit Portugal's um, commitment not only to the Explorers Club but also to GLEX Summit. Uh, this is also the year that Portugal will be hosting the United Nations Ocean Conference, uh, setting us back uh, on track for the work that we have set ourselves um, uh, up to uh, since 2017 for a more sustainable tourism sector and country but also on a route to a better tourism and future. Um, part of this uh, task is also the massive uh, uh, task of protecting our and preserving our oceans. Uh, so at the National Tourism Board and Visit Portugal, uh, we have um, kind of set ourselves uh, up for a challenge um, in an area that we are kind of pros at, which is surf. Um, with our strategic partners at Mayo and uh, the World Surf League, we decided to set a target for 2028 to transform the surfboard for the producing industry uh, by using env environmentally friendly uh, uh, performance surfboards at all World Surf League events um, worldwide. Um, these surfboards are made from ocean trash, uh, but they can still be ridden by pros and they can still win championships. <laughs> This project is allowing us to put a, micro, you know, a microphone and a, and a spotlight on it so that we can think about it. We need to make sustainable surfboards and, and bring awareness to it. It's important. Uh, you know, before we um, get into the main event, which is this wonderful sustainable uh, seafood, uh, I'd like to thank uh, the sponsor of the evening, and that's Expanding World. Uh, Manuel, I was over here. Manuel, come up here. He's he's a great friend of the club, and is really his imagination has really shaped a lot of views on Portugal. Of, by really showing the best that which it has. And, and look, it's, it's undeniable that Portugal is a beautiful place, but I, I think that uh, you know, when you really start realizing the deep character of the Portuguese people, besides the warmth, but also you know, with a foot in the past and, and certainly an eye of the future, it, it, it strikes just such a beautiful blend. So um, thank you very much. The pleasure. And uh, again, I'd like to um, have Ted Janoulis, who is the chair of this whole thing, come up and he'll say a few words as well. Yeah, yeah. I just that you had people for our Portuguese wine we're sharing with the Oh. No, everything is said, uh, people. I just like to remind you that with this amazing sustainable ocean foods, we'll have a great Portuguese wines for you. Uh, wine from Azores, volcanic wine, fab. And uh, port Pico. wine, uh, yes, Pico Island, Pico that Island. we climbed the summit last year. Yep. Um, and uh, so try our wines too, uh, for the ones who will not be lucky to come to 
Azores this year, okay? And uh, it's a pleasure for us um, and for tourism and for all the Portuguese institutions to have this beautiful partnership. Yeah. Thank you all. And you. And one last thing, it is less than a five-hour flight from Newark Airport, so is there a reason not to come? I don't think so. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. Congratulations. So, I, I was at Glex last year, and although I, I didn't make it to the Azores, Glex is phenomenal, so I hope you'll all go. Uh, my name is Ted Janoulis, and um, I'm one of 40-plus uh, volunteers who uh, worked to make this uh, last week possible. So many people contributed in so many different ways. Uh, we thanked our sponsors throughout the week. Rolex, this is our sixth event we've done. Would never have happened without them. They were with us from the very beginning, supporting us every year. But we thank the other ones. We thank Phil Raven, Lynn Blad, uh, Schmidt Marine Technology Partners, uh, Phil Stevenson. So I'm just mentioning those again. And we've also thanked by school our various donors and we've also, um, our various people who have provided things to us. You're all going to get a whole separate thank you from uh, Alex Wallace. But what I did want to do just once at the end of the week is uh, thank all these people who work so hard on this. So starting with um, Alex and Julie Wallace, who are the co-chairs for our <laughs> hard, hard to describe, hard to describe how much um, effort that they put into it. And we had two new co-chairs on the scene also, um, who I don't think are here, but Liz Widener and Kelly V. Turf each curated different sections of it. Um, Ann Passer um, is our honorary chair this year in recognition of five years of unbelievable work of putting this together. And just three more people um, I really want to mention um, who I think have put in so much work, it blows my mind, but uh, Constance Defiti has been awesome. Mark Bryant Brown, who has become the world's leading proponent uh, ambassador for the octopus. It's uh, strange but true. So thank you to Mark. And, and, a, and a special shout out to Liliana uh, Rodriguez, who last night, for those of you who are here, put together um, something when we looked at it, we thought, oh my gosh, this is so big. It's so nuanced. It's so choreographed. It's so complicated. How is this ever going to happen? And Lily, with her quiet insistence and wonderful way, cajoling us along, brought that whole thing to life last night, flawless, uh, just perfection, and such a wonderful thing to have inside our walls at the Explorers Club. So we really want to thank you and all the people that you brought to town, all the people who made it happen, insane amounts of work. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you. So other people will get thanked along the way. I just wanted to make sure we recognized uh, the, the people who did so much work. I, wish, I, I think our names of our committee has also been up there, but I uh, really wanted to just say at the end of uh, really five, six days, depending on how you count it, um, we're, we're all so grateful for the people who showed up, who supported it in so many different ways, and we look forward to seeing you at number seven next year. Thank you. I just realized I, I forgot one of the most important things to mention because I tried to wing it at the last minute, but the Explorers Club staff yes. has been absolutely incredible. And if, 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 you wanted to, if you wanted to see a site as an example, it was Kevin Murphy doing, doing the, the, re the rehearsal right before Big Ideas, and I've never seen someone speak so fast that everybody's going like this. Because they didn't want to miss anything. Totally flawless. They've been absolutely spectacular. <laughs> Brittany on the auction, Lacey on all the stuff that happened inside the house, Andrew on March, everybody on everything basically. And of course, our spectacular AV folks in the back. I see Alex and Luis. So next time I'm going to write it all down because that would have been the epic fail of all time if I'd forgotten to thank them. Thank you really sincerely to all the club staff, AV, and all the people around that, catering, Jenna, everybody. Thank you. We'd like to welcome everyone this evening to the Sustainable Seafood Soiree and give a special thanks to Rolex 
our presenting sponsor for the entire World Oceans Week. Also, we're grateful for the generous support from the Philip Stevenson Foundation, Schmidt Marine, I see some of you folks here, uh, Lindblad Expeditions, Fjall Raven, and once again, thanks to Glex for their sponsoring this evening. Manuel, thank you very much, and thank you for making Glex the incredible event that it's become. Uh, and we also, you know, World Oceans Week is really the result of the dedicated and creative efforts of the Explorers Club staff, the engine volunteers who've been here all week, all hours, the World Oceans Week Committee under the leadership of Ted Janoulis. So we, we thank you all. So after two years of virtual sustainable seafood evenings, it's our pleasure to finally have these visionary entrepreneurs at the Explorers Club. We're excited to share their vision and their delicious food. But first, we invite you to watch a short film showcasing the stories of these innovators in their own words. Hello, Explorers Club family, and happy World Oceans Week. I'm Courtney Boyd Myers. For those of you I haven't met yet, I'm the CEO and co-founder of Akua. Akua is an award-winning food company. We create delicious products from what we believe is the most sustainable source of food on Earth, ocean farmed kelp. We're obsessed with seaweed. I always have been. I've been making my own seaweed salad since I was a kid. And so when I learned about the amazing environmental benefits of growing kelp, and I already knew about the amazing human health benefits, and then I learned about the really cool blue-green economic benefits and supporting our New England-based ocean farmers who are moving from fishing to kelp farming, I just thought, I've got to start a business in this. And we've been trying to get more people to eat kelp ever since. In fact, we were right here at the Explorers Club in 2018 debuting our first product, Kelp Jerky. It was so exciting to meet so many people who were just as enthusiastic about kelp and you know, restoring health to our oceans as we were. In fact, over the years, the Explorers Club has been such a great home for us and we're so honored to be back here serving what is our hero product right now, the Kelp Burger. In fact, in 2020, during the pandemic, this community came together for a virtual dinner, and that's when I announced that we'd be working on the Kelp Burger. One year later, in May 2021, we launched the Kelp Burger to the world. So many people in this room became investors for our equity crowdfunding campaign and private investors, and we are so grateful to feel so supported by the folks who come together every year in New York and celebrate World Oceans Week. I just wanted to say that I am really sad not to be there right now. In fact, I have a very good excuse, though. I um, wanted to share some personal news with you. Just four weeks ago, even less, I gave birth to my first baby girl, and I named her Romy Ocean Ray. So she would always know that the ocean is near and dear to my heart as her mother, and hopefully it will be near and dear to her heart, too. So with that, I will leave you to your amazing event. Again, I wish I could be there. Um, Eve Palmer from our team is there. She was our first employee we ever hired, and she'll be serving up kelp burgers for everyone to try. And she'll probably tell you all about our next product that we're launching uh, in June in celebration of World Oceans Week, and that is the crab cake. We are so excited to bring a 100% plant-based crab cake to market made with kelp. Um, we'll be launching it soon and sharing discount codes with all of you if you want to try it on our website. And we're going to be serving it in select restaurants across the country, too. Cool. Well, that's it from Akua. Thanks again for having me and listening to my story. I hope to connect with you all virtually or in person again soon. Bye. When you look at the clean, cold waters of Maine, you may expect to see lobster boats and fishing. Below these icy waters, we are growing one of the most nutrient-dense foods on the planet. This is a kelp farm.
kelp is a type of seaweed. I love eating kelp. It's super nutrient-packed with potassium, calcium, iodine, B12, omega-3s, all nutrients that we need more of in our diet. It can be used in anything, soups, desserts, salads, anywhere. Most of the seaweed that we eat in the United States is actually imported. So super processed. It's often rehydrated and dyed with a lot of artificial coloring. Atlantic Sea Farms is doing something really different. The kelp is grown in super clean waters. It's packaged right away. So we're locking in all the nutrients and then we distribute it to partners like Sweet Green. It's something that I can feel good about eating, something I can feel good about feeding my children, and something that tastes just really great. We also provide all of our seeds free of charge to our partner farmers, and we guarantee purchase of all of the kelp grown on the farms. My family's been fishing in the state of Maine since the 1600s. We really started looking into diversification so that we're not just dependent on lobster. We chose kelp farming because the timing of it went really, really well with lobstering. It gave me something else to do and another source of income throughout the winter when lobstering slowed down. It's not just our farm, we look at it as our community's farm. And that allows the fishermen in our area to really be a part of the farm. Most of the food we eat has some sort of negative effect on the environment. Our kelp has an extremely positive effect. We have no fertilizer, no arable land, and it actually helps improve water quality and helps mitigate the effects of ocean acidification. This partnership with Sweet Green gets our fresh kelp in front of people. It's normalizing kelp in a really fantastic way, and Sweet Green is a great partner to do that. <laughs> Every time somebody eats some of this kelp, they're helping improve the lives of coastal fishermen who are diversifying their income in the face of climate change. And they're also improving their own health and getting a great, delicious meal. We're really excited to do it ethically and sustainably in a way that people can feel really good about what they're eating. And we truly believe that good food should do good. My name is Nick Mendoza and I am founder of Neptune Snacks, which is a mission-driven food brand based in Seattle, Washington, and we are makers of healthy, delicious, sustainable fish jerky. Our current line consists of four flavors of U.S. West Coast rockfish and one Alaska Pollock jerky, each of which have won awards for taste and texture and blind taste tests. The flavors are cracked pepper, sweet citrus ginger, sea salt and juniper, and my personal favorite, spicy Cajun. The product has 25 grams of protein. 450 to 580 omega-3s. It's nut-free, gluten-free, non-GMO, but what's most important to me and our team at Neptune is our mission and sustainability. When you look at a wild-caught sustainable fish like rockfish or like wild Alaska pollock, you have a product that's produced with no agricultural resources, no land conversion, a lower carbon footprint than even tofu. In many dimensions, fish are great. You don't need any fresh water. You don't use any antibiotics. You don't use any pesticides or chemicals or fertilizer. Uh, you do generate carbon, but many fisheries are much lower carbon than chicken or beef or pork. The really low ones are small pelagic fishes, sardines, mackerels, herrings, and some large industrial fisheries like, say, the pollock fishery in the Bering Sea. When it comes to seafood, there's hundreds of potential items. They can be wild, they can be farmed. And so the way we approach it is we want to tell a story of one very easy to understand fishery. The U.S. West Coast Groundfish Fishery is an amazing place to source from, not only because 
you know, this is a really high quality, delicious fish, but the story of what happened to the fishery, I think is a success story that can be replicated across fisheries. West Coast ground fish had been one of the biggest fisheries here on the West Coast. However, by the late 80s and 90s, the stocks of West Coast ground fish really had declined heavily. New rules came in about when, where, how, how much to fish. All of those things led to the recovery of the stocks back to where they were before. West Coast ground fish might be one of the best ecological conservation success stories that we have in the world of seafood. I've dedicated my life to the oceans and finding the solutions that we need now urgently to restore ocean health. We make a high quality, objectively delicious jerky that's different both because it's fish and appeals to people who are trying to cut down red meat in their diets, but it's also not made from salmon or ahi or any of these most commonly consumed species because we as a society need to be broadening our palate to more delicious, abundant, U.S. wild-caught seafood that's available on our shores. And Neptune thinks that the best way to do that is with a familiar snack. Hudson Valley Fisheries is a state-of-the-art recircling aquaculture system in Hudson, New York. We raise steelhead trout year-round that are New York State grown and certified, free of hormones, antibiotics, and vaccines, and rated the best choice by Seafood Watch. Our steelhead are the freshest available because they are delivered to our customers in the Northeast and beyond within hours of humane harvesting. To create Hudson Valley Fisheries, we drew from 40 years of experience in recycling and environmental stewardship. Unlike other forms of fish farming, recircling aquaculture systems utilize cutting-edge land-based technology. These systems eliminate the negative environmental impacts of traditional aquaculture in our oceans while protecting our fish from pollutants and plastics. Our facility reuses 98.9% .9 of its water, upcycles its waste, and maintains a small carbon footprint. Native to Alaska and the West Coast, Steelhead trout is fast becoming a popular alternative to salmon as people discover its outstanding taste, color, texture, and versatility. Plus, our fish contain 1.6 grams of omega-3 fatty acids for four ounce serving, making them as nutritious as they are delicious. Steelhead are a hardy species and well suited to aquaculture. Their schoolers and from hatching spend all their time in communities in our 54 tanks from five feet to 45 feet in diameter going from nursery where they're hand fed into small juvenile grow out and eventually harvest tanks. Our steelhead are humanely harvested at 16 months. The sashimi grade fish is perfect for enjoying raw, cured, smoked, or cooked. Our New York steelhead are fed a responsibly sourced GMO-free and balanced diet of natural antioxidants, proteins, and lipids. Our filtration system separates fish waste and nitrogen and allows us to upcycle all of our waste. At Hudson Valley Fisheries, we use 100% of our fish. Trimmings are converted into fertilizer and go back into the earth to nourish soil for plant production. In addition to producing sustainable protein, we are also an aquaculture teaching facility working with regional schools to educate future generations about the art and science of regenerative aquaculture. Our steelhead eggs sourced from the Pacific Northwest have superior genetics and are traceable back 40 years. From hatching to harvesting, we've implemented practices which are designed to provide our fish with comfort and minimal stress, which results in a higher quality flavor and texture for the consumer. We are the only U.S. aquaculture facility using protocols set by the Royal Society for Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. Our humane harvesting techniques use electrical stunning to anesthetize each fish before it is processed and quickly bled to optimize freshness and flay integrity. Hudson Valley Fisheries is at the forefront of both aquaculture and agriculture, and I'm proud to be a part of a team that is as committed to feeding the planet as it is to caring for the planet. We are committed to producing the healthiest fish in the most sustainable way possible. The incredible support we receive from chefs and buyers is proof 
the innovative aquaculture can be healthy, delicious, and environmentally conscious. Thank you for supporting Hudson Valley Fisheries. Studies indicate that 60% of the fish stocks our ocean currently are at capacity and 30% are completely depleted. At the same time, the demand for seafood year over year increases. And with our population set to explode to 10 billion by 2050, there's no way our oceans could possibly keep up. It's obvious that another alternative is needed, one without any sacrifice at all, and that was plant-based seafood. For over 20 years, our all-female, family-owned company has been creating awesome, award-winning seafood experiences. We know exactly what seafood is supposed to look, smell, taste like, and that's why creating plant-based alternatives came natural to us. Being in the seafood industry for as long as we have, we've seen some pretty unacceptable things go on around us. These experiences were so impactful that they are what's fueling our passion for creating sustainable seafood options for future generations. We all want to make the world a better place. We all want to know that our everyday decisions can make a difference. Our plant-based seafood gives consumers the satisfaction that their choices are doing just that, without having to sacrifice taste, health, the environment, or our precious oceans. So join us on this exciting frontier of reimagining sustainable seafood. Back in the late 1980s, sustainability was a foreign concept and we saw less and less fish coming from the boats. In the 1990s, we realized that our oceans were in trouble. And it wasn't just the whales and dolphins that were in trouble, it was the fish themselves. No one made any claims about sustainability of a, a fishing or seafood company. Globally, our seafood supply chain is incredibly complicated. Not only are people fishing all over the world for the certain species that we demand, but also we're transporting it from all over those parts of the world to where the markets are. Wild captured fishery stocks have plateaued over the past two decades, and even with more sustainable wild capture fisheries, you won't see higher catch volumes. Tuna, in general, is one of the only animals that's eaten en masse that isn't farmed, and so it's something that really is in danger because of the way that we produce it, because of the way we consume it. The IPCC report that came out was very clear that we have about a decade to avoid the worst impacts of climate change. So what are we going to do about it? Sinless is founded on a core principle that we want to have a thriving ocean. So we're aiming for something that currently isn't filled on the market. We're doing an alternative for raw tuna specifically. Our scientific process is basically taking some cells from inside of a fish, pulling them out, growing them up into larger amounts of themselves. What you need to do at that point is get those cells to sit on a scaffold, attach to the scaffold, and form muscle fibers. And so in doing that, you know, we found a lot of great options for our scaffolds, for our cellular. But we also realized we just had a really good plant-based product at that point. We decided to move that to market as well. Strategically, Michael always emphasizes that the product should compete on market metrics. Taste, texture, your interaction with the product. Will it meet your expectations if you're a meat eater? And that has been the bar that has been set for plant-based tuna, and specifically for a raw tuna counterpart. Look, seafood is the most traded commodity on Earth. It moves around more than any other thing we eat. With our technology, we can make seafood completely geographically agnostic. It solves the issue of seafood spending a ton of time in transit, which can eventually result in spoilage and foodborne illness sometimes. But also it solves a lot of carbon as an issue. It has the potential to expand our seafood supply without any downsides for our oceans. For the first time, this new industry of cell-cultured and plant-based seafood really has the potential to expand our seafood supplies in ways that we never have before. We actually provide like a serious advantage for operators. Right now, tuna prices fluctuate pretty wildly based on like wild caught catch. And for us, 
don't really have that issue. So we can provide people like a stable tuna supply um, at a stable price. Tuna in the wild bioaccumulate toxins like heavy metals and pesticides. So there's a significant risk of contamination. You know, we're producing fish with no mercury, with no plastic. We're also creating what can be a local seafood supply of any species. Is finless an ocean shot or moon shot solution? We need all of it. We need multiple ocean shots. We need multiple moon shots so that we can have an ocean in the future that thrives. Ninety-eight percent of Earth's water is salty. At Heron Farms, we're unlocking this abundant resource, making growing food without fresh water possible. We're a company with a mission to give back. We've made a commitment to restore one square foot of salt marsh for every pound of sea beans sold. Sea beans are a healthy salt replacement. Chop and drop them into any dish. Your body and the marshes will thank you. 